saying it might even run out just in the course of the conversation I met. Well, let's have a quick meeting. Encourage <laughs> <laughs> everybody to. Um, Questions for the manager on his recommendation? Okay. Um, earlier today, uh, the chair of the school board reached out to me um, asking to come forward tonight to clarify um, some things. Um, at our meeting on the 8th, we had um, uh, the director of facilities come forward to answer some questions. And I think that there was um, some confusion from some of his answers, uh, and, and the chair of the school board was looking to clarify some of those statements that were made. So, um, I'm going to invite um, Elizabeth Cypher's school board chair to come forward. Um, she also provided a reference uh, that I'll hand out to you all. What are the priorities? 
what's going on. And so it's been a very collaborative effort looking at the needs of this district, going back to the CIP plan, but also there are some things that didn't make it onto the CIP plan, and there are other things that maybe are definite priorities. If you look at the top, from the middle school, there's a standby generator to cover the entire facility. That was on the capital improvement plan. I know I don't know everything that's on this new list. There is a newer list than March 27th. But I know that that did get moved because it's a rather large item and there are other priorities that, that took its place. So it's, it's been a very collaborative effort. It's, um, and um, there has been no board level discussion about defraying CIP items or removing them with the intent of specifically coming for a bond um, that could at some point down the road be a discussion, but it's never been a specific discussion at this point. And none of the, the, the roofing or those sort of really important projects have been deferred. So I just wanted to make sure that we were clear about that. And um, <coughs> if the town council would like, my understanding is that the Buildings and Grounds Committee has completed the list of what will be done given that budget that is in, you know, that portion of the budget. And I would be happy to share that with the town council so you know exactly what was going into CIP for the next year. So that's all I've got for you. Any questions for Elizabeth? Oh, question. Right. Yes. Um, you mentioned that the CIP bond is not this, has not been discussed by the school board, but yet it is in the school board's budget that we budget booklets that we received um, under the facilities. It says bonded, bonded, or bond, or to be bonded, or something and so forth. So um, I'm talking about. I've heard the director of facilities make reference to some different bonds that I wasn't aware of. So I guess that's what I'm clarifying. We have already come to the town council and we have a, a current bond, that's my understanding. Um, we don't have we don't have plans in the works at this time to go out to bond at the same time. So I'm still confused. I mean, okay. on your facilities um, tab in your budget booklet, um, on page three of three, two or three, and three and three. May I grab my book? Yes, yes, please do. Okay. Yeah, I don't want to be oh. trying to. I know that that was um, somewhat out of order on the agenda since the school board item is the second, but I wanted to just bring that forward so that in the context of all of the discussion we'll have, um, sort of have the most comprehensive information we could. Other discussion? Any other discussion on 75-2017, municipal portion of the budget? 
Seeing none, all those in favor of adopting the municipal budget for fiscal 2018 as uh, amended, including the $48,000 reduction to account 600. Next up is number 76-2017, the school board budget approval. Councilor Sullivan, do you want to make a motion? Twenty-four million eight hundred seventy-nine thousand fourteen dollars. Second. Second. Councilor Wright. Discussion. Councilor Gardner. Sure. Um, so I know that you spent a lot of time, Jessica, uh, working on uh, preparing a lot of really great information, um, the spreadsheets, the formulas, um, and which really base. What we're looking at for numbers just first time, they really and truly a reality and based in facts. Um, you know, I thought we had conceptually put that out there as a possibility that I thought that during the workshop we had agreed that at the council land, so certainly people can make a motion at any time um, that we would be going forth with the originally number from uh, the school board. Um, so knowing the realities that we put in front of us, knowing the facts, I still feel that I will, would like to support, so I'm voting against that, the original um, school board approved budget of $24,879,014. I feel that um, we as a community vote and approve school board members to look at the school budget and to spend the countless hours and months to sift through that information and to work at looking at all the mandates, the uh, funding that has to be done, and what we want and all the pressure comes in. And then to look at what the district leaders and work with them to come up with something that's viable. I feel that people in Cape Elizabeth moved to Cape Elizabeth, um, particularly for our schools. We might stay here because we have we probably love it, um, but they move here and it's our school and are successful, incredibly um, 
solid facts on schools that attract people to skin and at the same time to resolve our property values. So I feel like the school board did an excellent job of outlining um, what the needs are um, and weighing that with the cost and came forth what they feel is a reasonable um, increase. Um, that's really not even truly out of line from past um, years. I think we put together a scenario of a 17-year um, history um, with you know trajectory from you know lower you know left hand to upper right, and we have been on the increase. We we have annually every year increase, and, and that's a trend where I how do we do this? I'm not sure we're ever going to get all So I still feel like this community, and I've heard, we heard from a lot of people today, and I realize there's a lot of people who feel like they would like to see this, um, our, our budget lowered by, um, you know, what I feel is kind of an arbitrary amount, just to say that we can lower it. I would prefer to defer to where our school board and those elected people have um, really put forth. So I'm going to vote uh, against that motion and hoping that we can come back around to the original proposed amount. Councilor Gordon? Um, I agree with just about everything that Councilor Brennan has said. Um, I felt that we just to set a workshop and thought that we agreed um, in a non-voting manner that we were going to move forward with the proposed budget from the school board. Um, I've heard lots of people that the budget keeps going up and the budget keeps going up and so I asked um, our town manager, Matthew, to give me the numbers for our surrounding communities because people are saying that they can't stay here because they're going to have to move out of state. So if you move to South Portland, their school budget is being at a 4.59% increase this year. You go to Portland, they're at a 2.75% increase. Scarborough is at a 4.96% increase just for their school budget. Then I asked them to also look at some of the communities that we compare ourselves with on other things, like Narnak. They're at a 5.05% school budget increase. Bowman, a 7% a increase. So it's not just us. And I think the school board did a great job to keep the budget at what they did. And they didn't get everything they wanted. So, you know, they obviously had to make sacrifices and they, were, they did this in a conscious effort to keep their budget down. So, I as well will be voting against this. I support the budget as it was proposed. Thank you. Other discussion? I'll go next. Um, That's all right. And I will take a little bit longer than others. Um, I wrote myself some notes, and I also um, thought that I had some uh, numbers in there that were. Sometimes you know, we talk about numbers and they just get a little bit too much, but um, what I will say is this is my 14th year reviewing the school budget. I would suggest that maybe I've done it more than anybody else in the room. Um, I review the budget line by line, and with my financial background, I feel I have a good grasp on how the budget is developed, and I listen to what the needs are. I'll talk about some... Um, some numbers. Class size. In December of 2015, the school board changed the class size policy to reflect lower class sizes across all classes, thereby allowing the same staffing numbers for lower total student population. Reduction in school population. In 2001, the student population of Cape Elizabeth was 1,736 students with a budget of $13,617,956. There was a peak enrollment in 2006 of 1,847 students with a budget of $17,554,204. The proposed school board enrollment for 2018 is 1,571 students with a budget of 24 million $879,014. Since 2001, there has been a reduction of 165 students. At the same time, staffing has increased by 11.51 staff. I'm not sure what five one is, but I'd say half. In 2001, the price expended per student was $7,844. 
The proposed price expended per student for 2018 is $15,836, which is more than double. The special ed population, which was talked about significantly um, at our workshop, is approximately 10% of the total student population, which is lower than surrounding communities, according to the school department. At the Town Council School Board Workshop, the town was asked to reduce the proposed, their proposed budget by 1%, which the town has done. It was proposed that the school board do the same, which was not supported. The original superintendent's proposed budget at the first school board workshop, their workshop, was $24,682,000. $945, an increase over the current year of $395,400. The school board's proposed budget is $24,879,014, an increase of $591,469. Initially, the school board's budget was $25,000,000, $1,623, an increase of $714,078, which was mitigated by $122,609 decrease in health insurance costs. Since 2003, the percentage, the percent of salaries and benefits compared to the total school budget has gone from 77.57% to 83.11%. This upward creep has left less money for other school needs. Although most of the school staff has negotiated contracts, the total number of employees is up to the superintendent. So re referring back to the salaries and benefits, which was a great concern to me. Um, you look at 2003, you look at 2008, you look at 2017, and you look at 2018. And the amount of the school budget is creeping up in salaries and benefits. This leaves very left, they're barely left for other things. Um, this year, we talked, we heard tonight about the CIP cut, which again concerns me, because we're talking about the maintenance of our school facilities, and it was discussed that we would continue to maintain school facilities, and we would have a CIP budget that covered that. Um, and again, we heard tonight that there was a bonding issue that was not discussed by the school board, but is in our school board packets. So, I could say more, but I'm not going to. Um, I support the tables of the schools. If I didn't, I wouldn't have given my time and energy over the last 14 years. Um, I receive a huge amount of pay. I get the same increase that everybody else gets, 0% of 0 and 0. I graduate from Cape Elizabeth as well as my husband and his family. Our daughter graduated from here. Cape Elizabeth has consistently been one of the top performing schools in the state. I continue to believe that the high performance is due to a partnership between the schools, the parents, and the students. At the same time, my responsibility is to the whole town, and I know there are residents that cannot afford higher taxes regardless of the amount. This is not a bare bones budget. Um, as I outlined in the details. And just a side note, when the state uses the EPS funding formula, which we talked about before, one of the items of consideration, and I don't agree with all of what the state decides that the schools need, but one of the items of consideration is enrollment. And the reason the state reduces our funding is because of our reducing enrollment. And I will remind counselors that there have been counselors in the past, as of last year, that said that this is not um, sustainable. So I ask, if not tonight, then when? 
Thank you. Thank you. Other discussion? Council Sullivan? Yes, I, I've got some prepared comments. <clears throat> um, I certainly want to uh, commend the school board for their efforts. I know that you put a lot of time into this. Um, so we, um, and I think it's very important that the goal is a healthy friction because this is all about checks and balances. Um, we are mandated by law to be the final word on the number that goes to the voters. And so I want to just mention that. Um, this school board budget has no cut. We've got an email saying no cut the budget. It's going up by over half a million dollars, so I don't consider it uncut. As one concerned citizen pointed out recently, it is important to make our decisions dispassionately based on facts and not emotions. As town councils, we need to remember that when we tax our citizens, they have to pay. They don't have a choice. And we must ensure that any tax increase is responsible and that all budgets have integrity. The school board proposes a $24.9 million budget for fiscal year 2018. If the, school, uh, the proposed school budget is approved, it will be an increase of over $11 million since 2001. I guess you just heard that. Sorry about that. That's an 83% budget increase, along with a 10% increase in students since 2001. From peak enrollment in 2006, we have lost 244 students and are projected to lose another 32 next year. That amounts to a budget increase of 7.3 million since 2006, or 41%, with a drop of 15% in enrollment. Salaries and benefits are increasing as a percentage of the school budget. For next year, it will increase by over $860,000 from this year and will be 83% of the entire school budget. 10 years ago, we had 177 more students than we do today. And salaries and benefits were 75% of the school budget then. It is true that that projected state subsidy of 1,826,000, that is 1 1.6 million less than in 2016, and we've heard about this from the emails we've gotten and we've heard about this from the school board, they are down 1.6 million in two years. That is true. Although the subsidy round has been up and down since 2001, it has averaged 2.5 million. Among things such as property valuation, student enrollment is a factor in what the state calculates people with the and other districts. I do not understand why the school board would base its 2018 budget, fiscal year 2018, on the highest amount it ever received two years ago, which was two years ago, higher by over 328,000 than its aid in 2009. Why base a budget on the high water mark when only once in the last 18 years did school subsidy ever come close to that? And when the 18-year historical average has been, has been 2.5 million, why not plan on something close to the historical average, especially when enrollment continues to decline? From 2001 to 2018, we are looking at an 83% increase in school budget with a 10% increase in enrollment. The, the municipal budget has increased 68% in that time frame, with no change, virtually no change in the town's population. Again, from peak enrollment in 2006 to 2018, we are looking at a proposed 41% increase in school budget with a 15% decrease in enrollment. For those of us who own businesses, or have owned businesses as I have, would you be hiring more employees if you lost 10 to 50% of your customer base? I don't think so. Not only would you refrain from hiring staff, you might choose not to fill positions vacated by attrition, or you might downsize. You would look for economies and perhaps struggle to make payroll. You would not assume that customers, that the customers you still have would be willing to pay 41% to 83% for your more for your products. I realize that the school budget and, and as well as municipal, uh, these are not businesses. But I suspect that few among us have had a 41% 
83% increase in our pay or our salaries or our pensions. Most of us have revenue and spending problems. We can't raise our salaries or pensions to meet this tax, these tax rate increases. So we have to cut. We have to cut something. I think that a 1% decrease in the school, the proposed school budget is extremely reasonable. It's still quite an increase. And as in the documents I prepared and sent to everyone today, and there are copies in the back and online as well, if we had a 1% decrease in the school budget, which we have already, uh, our town manager has already accommodated in, in the municipal budget, it would give us a total tax rate increase of 3.5%. And that is still above the 10 year average of 2.75%. So, again, I, I'd like to echo Councillor uh, Ray's comments, if not now, then. This train needs to slow down. Thank you. Other discussion? Councillor Jordan? Um, I just want to say that um, as a graduate of the Kidlidloo School System, I am a supporter of um, the school system, but I'm also um, as uh, Councillor Ray said, I'm also here for all of the citizens of Cape Elizabeth, and, and I need to think about that. And this is probably one of the most difficult decisions that um, I think, uh, as a councillor, we make, um, because it's, it's impacting the young people in our, in our community. Um, but what I, um, as I thought about the budget that was put forth, and as I look at uh, what um, Councillor Sullivan is, is putting forward, I do have to uh, look at that as a town, it's not sustainable for us to continue to year after year after year after year just move this train forward. And I think we need to step back and um, and I am in support of where Jessica put forward at this point in time. Thank you. Other discussion? Mr. Gordon? Just to uh, screw on and everybody's gotten to talk about what Jessica proposed with the change. I'd also like to offer an amendment to number seven, order number seven. Changing the last six words of the paragraph. Um, the school department shall evaluate their options instead of curve tail spending to offset any shortfall. Depending on what the shortfall is, I would rather hear back from the school department if they need some additional funding than to lock them into curve tail spending to offset any shortfall right now. If they're they can walk away knowing that they can come back to the town council if they need to. They can curtail some shortfall if they need to. But I'd like them to have the option that if they need an extra 50000 or something, that they could at least come back and ask. So that's amending the last six words of the paragraph. Take those last six words out and change them to evaluate the options. Okay. Is there, do you need that right back then? I'm good. I have it, thank you. Okay. Is there a second to Councilor Jordan's I'll proposed second amendment? That. I would second that. Councilor Penny Jordan, discussion on the amendment. It's on the floor. Yeah, I would agree. I think it's um, be an important opportunity to at least give the school board an opportunity to investigate ways to adjust settings if it were to come in. Mm -hmm. Know what the numbers would be, and then come back to the council and propose a scenario um, for potentially giving us the opportunity to potentially supplement if they did or we did that. So I would support that. Other discussion? Okay.
for boys um, with that aspect of it. I, I, I understand what you're trying to get to in terms of um, you know, allowing the council the discretion to um, you know, potentially plug holes in the budget, but it, it, it just feels to me the wording is a bit vague and open-ended. I don't know if others have comments to that, but Council Owens? Yep. Um, I, um, I, I don't object to your proposition, but what I'm thinking is um, if you let the wording the way it is, it doesn't prevent the school board from approaching the council should there be a need. I wouldn't think. I mean, I mean, I mean it says you shall. So they should yeah. put out to curtail. They're spending it, so I said in short, so they're saying they have to. Yeah, not sure. they shall to May. You could just change the word shall to May with that. Yes, if you shall, I'm not saying. Yes, but no. Shall, so. That's why I was trying to think of a way, I mean, evaluate their options. That's their options. They can curtail this within their budget. They can come back to the I mean, they only have so many options, okay. really. Okay. It's really yeah. if, it, if you change the word shall to May, the discussion. Seeing none, all those in favor of the amendment to change uh, Clause 7 to read the school, the school department may curtail spending to offset any shortfall. All those in favor of the amendment. Okay. So we return to the main motion on the floor. It is the proposed allocation of $24,660,350 reflecting a 1% decrease from what is shown here on the agenda. Is there any discussion on that? Um, I'll offer some comments. I first wanted to um, go out of my way to thank uh, all those who attended the public hearing last week and spoke uh, their various opinions relating to the budget, and all those who took the time to email the council, um, of which we received many emails on this topic. Um, I'm particularly appreciative of the town's continued engagement on this matter. It's by, you know, I think everybody's estimation the single most important thing that we do, considering it's the single biggest, um, you know, allocation of, of, uh, of your tax dollars, and ultimately at the end of the day, we're here to be good stewards of of everybody's tax dollars, and, and so appreciate everybody's um, interest and engagement in the issue. I also want to thank the, the school board and the superintendent, and um, Catherine Mesmer, and all the rest of the staff for what ultimately is hours upon hours, and Matt as well, um, hours upon hours <coughs> of work and time and energy that they put into this. Um, it's, uh, I think, often um, is uh, is underappreciated and it shouldn't be. Uh, it's a ton of work that these folks do uh, on behalf of, of certainly us as counselors to have the most in, uh, uh, informed um, set of data to look at and, and also on behalf of the members of the town the community. So thank you all for that. Um, Jessica, I also want to thank you for um, what I thought was fantastic leadership for the finance council. Uh, the Finance Committee, rather, uh, and um, uh, uh, a high level of engagement in, in all of the workshops, uh, participation in meetings with members of the school board and the business manager. Uh, really appreciate the, value, the time that you put into it. And thank you very much for that. Um, regarding some of the uh, numbers that were discussed earlier, part of the comments, um, you know, numbers are a funny thing, like Kathy said, there's a lot of different ways to look at them. Um, and you can take different numbers 
um, you know, certainly to, to make your case in a number of different ways. I think at the end of the day, um, everybody up here, um, you know, wants what's best for the community. Uh, I, I don't question that at all. Um, but I, I, I think that there's, uh, depending on, you know, how you look at different numbers, there's, there's different stories that are told. Um, there's no questioning that the, the spending has gone up. There's no debating that fact, whether it be on the municipal side or the school side. There's no, no question in the spending going up. Um, but when I sat in the different budget meetings um, and went through the, both the municipal budget and the school budget line by line, like, it, like I hope everybody else did, um, I didn't see uh, you know, lavish items being asked for. Um, I didn't see extravagance, um, you know, beyond uh, what I heard articulated as very strong cases for the needs of the students in the schools and the needs of, uh, on, the, on the municipal side, the needs of this, the community. Um, I think, you know, the cost of delivering services has changed dramatically over, you know, the 10 years the CAP that decided from 2006 to 2016, to use that 10 years, you know, that's a, that's a big increase, but, but the cost of the service that we deliver has changed dramatically in that time. Um, I heard 77% salary and benefits versus 83 plus percent salary and benefits. But the composition of those staff have changed during that time. Um, and when I think back to the August 25th workshop and discussion of, for example, just one example, adding ed techs um, that relative to peer communities were really just bringing us up to up to this, the, the recommended level, not, not even an excess level, but the recommended level. Um, you know, those are, those are headcount that add to that 11 plus staff, 11.51 staff over the course of time, like Kathy mentioned. Going to full day kindergarten adds to that staff. I, you know, the composition of the staff and faculty and, and support staff that we have has changed dramatically. And, and that coupled with the, the, the cost of delivering those services, um, you know, is a, is a big factor in that. Um, I heard reference to the per student spending. Um, even at the numbers that we're talking about, and this is, these, these next two things I'm gonna say really drive to the, the, the point that I wanna make is, um, the per, per pupil spending is still below almost all of the towns that we measure ourselves and compare ourselves against. In, in the area. Um, so yes, it's increased, but so is everybody else's. It, you, I mean, you know, we talk about a runaway train, but there's, there's, a, lot of, there's a lot of trains on a lot of tracks, I guess, but um, the point that Caitlin made about the, you know, the amount that taxes are going up in other communities, um, I don't see us as an outlier in that. We're all in a tough situation. We're, we're all in a situation where we'd love to have more revenue, right? That would make this an easy problem. Um, but we don't. Um, now the last point I'll make is, is uh, regarding something that Jessica said, which I, I thought was interesting. Uh, that if this was a business and you were charging, I think the point you were making was if you were charging your customers more for the service, you know, would those customers turn away? We haven't seen our customers turn away, at, at, you know, in, at, in the last several Junes when they've gone to the, the ballot box to ratify the budget that's put before them, it's been, it's been approved and, and in most cases by strong margins. Um, I think that's the interesting and compelling point to be made here is that at least on the school board portion of the budget, the voters have the chance to, to make their voice heard. Um, we heard in the meeting that we had last week during the public comment period that there's more people that are families in town that don't have students than those that do. And there was, I think somebody was making a point about whether or not the schools benefit everybody in the community. And I'm not gonna open up that can of worms, but, but all of those people also have the opportunity to come to the, to the, um, to the voting booths on, on June 13th. Um, to make their voice heard. If, if, those, if those folks decide and then, you know, indicate that they don't uh, want to approve the budget and, um, or, you know, in the non-binding question indicate 
what their, their sentiment is towards it, then that'll be, I think, a strong indicator for us. But to, to date, those customers haven't turned away. Um, and um, so, you know, for those reasons, I'm going to vote against um, the proposed decrease. I, I made the point during the workshop that I think, while I understand the intention of the, of, of the, the measure, um, I think that the 1% the de decrease is a little bit arbitrary. I think it's also a little bit disingenuous to say that, um, you know, the municipal side of the house sort of magnanimously um, made this massive reduction because, number one, it, it wasn't in the, in the scheme of things as much um, that needed to be reduced, obviously, as a percentage of the overall budget to get to that. But number two, there were some things, I think, that were sort of already low-hanging fruit that we all agreed that whether there was an ask for the 1% reduction or not just made sense to do. And so um, I, 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 I don't think it's entirely, um, it doesn't pass the entire straight face test for me to say, well, here the town bent over backwards to get to that 1% and, and the school didn't. But um, So anyway, um, I'm going to vote against the measure to reduce. Um, I can also count and uh, see that that leaves us, um, unless somebody plans to change their um, the way that they were leaning, um, I can see that that leaves us at 3-3, but um, if there's no further discussion, I'll call the question. Seeing no further discussion, all those in favor of the motion on the floor to uh, allocate the budget amount of $24,660,350. All those in favor? Opposed? So we're deadlocked. Um, in the event of a tie vote on the motion, the motion, uh, the, the vote of the item, or the motion doesn't carry, so the motion is lost. In the event of a tie vote. Okay. okay. Council Wright? I'd like to make a motion um, to approve a school budget based on the superintendent's original budget of March 7th, 2017, of $24,682,945. Second that. Please repeat the amount, Kathy. Yes, twenty-four million six hundred and eighty-two thousand nine hundred and forty-five dollars. Thank you. This is a higher number than the yep. one percent. Yep, thank you. Moved by Councillor Ray, seconded by Councillor Jordan. Is there any discussion? Councillor Jordan. I'm gonna make amendments to our seven to change the word shadow to May. Is there a second for that amendment? For what? To s the same thing we did for the first one. Oh, yes. Yeah. 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 Council Grant, yeah. any discussion on the amendment? Seeing none, all those in favor? It's unanimous. Uh, back to the original motion. Uh, the $24,682,945 representing the figure from the superintendent's original budget submitted on May, uh, March 7th. I think it was the date. Other discussion? That's good. Uh, yes. Uh, I attended that initial uh, school board budget meeting when the superintendent uh, presented his original budget to the school board. And um, I, I thought it was quite reasonable, and I thought, well, I could support that. Of course, later, the school board added um, a lot of money to that. But it would, if we approved that, we would bring the total tax rate increase. That's everything. Municipal, Homestead, and uh, County to 3.3%. Um, I don't like that as much as 3.1%, which would be 1% decrease across the board, but I, I can support this. Other discussion? Council Wright? Um, the reason I propose this is I recognize we need to count to four. And um, this is not the number I want. It's higher than the number I want. Um, but um, in answer to um, um, the chairman's concern, this is not an arbitrary number. This is the number that the superintendent initially proposed. And I'll just add a couple of things. Um, looking at the school budget for a number of years, there's, um, in my opinion, 
there's a tendency for, for folks to get um, emotionally charged up about the budget. Um, and I understand that. I have a child, and a lot of people do have children. And it's not hard to get concerned, especially if you hear some sound bites that, oh my gosh, if we don't get all the money we need, um, the children are going to suffer. I have not found that to be the case so far. Um, I, as I mentioned before, I think that the, the school is a partnership and it's um, parents expecting a lot from their children, children expecting a lot, and staff um, expecting a lot and providing a lot. Um, this number is higher than the CPIU, it's higher than the cost of living, it's higher than the Social Security increase. Um, so again, we're talking about folks in town that are going to struggle to um, even keep up with this number. Um, but I, I, uh, I, I will support it. I'd like it to be lower. I think I said that once, I'll say it again. Um, but I realize that there are counselors that have differing opinions, and I'm hoping that we can come up with something that at least four of us can agree upon. It would be nice if it was six. Um, so I'll stop there. Thank you. Other discussion? Yes, sir. I mean, really this is as Frank said, I don't know if it's the original question, so I'm not really, when we're talking hundreds of thousands of dollars, I'm not really seeing the difference. I'm seeing this, but the proposal is the one we just said about, so it's still going to be against us. Other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion on the floor to uh, allocate a budget of $24,682,945 for a school budget for fiscal 18. All those opposed? No further along. <coughs> Councilor Jordan. I made a motion to approve item 76-2017 school budget approval as written for $24,879,014. Also changing order number seven, last sentence, and saying school department shall curtail, the school department may curtail. Is there a second? I'll say that. Discussion. Um, I would just point out that the two things. Um, I don't know if it was being rounded up on what was circulated to us with the with the three different scenarios here from 3.9 or 3.88, but um, either one of those is a total tax increase less than um, fiscal 17. Which was 3.91, so even a 3.9 were effectively flat to last year. Um, and I'm also reminded, um, I believe. Well, I better check that before before I make that statement. Hold on, In just a second. Yeah, I, I, the um, proposed expenditures on the school side are, just reminding everybody, less than they were um, for, for fiscal 17 as well. So um, I understand and appreciate the overall concern about um, the general trend and on average here, but I think on a year over year, comparison from fiscal 17 to fiscal 18, I don't know that 
a more reasonable effort could have been made in this case, um, particularly, again, calling back to the needs that I heard um, expressed um, and articulated as, as uh, critical to, um, uh, to delivering the, the quality of education that, that is expected in this town. Um, you know, to see, to see ultimately numbers that come in under last year's uh, tax increase and based on expenditures on the school side that are less than the previous years, um, to me represents more than a good faith effort um, to be cognizant of the um, uh, fiduciary responsibility that we have to be good stewards of the taxpayers' money. So, other discussion? Jessica? Uh, when you are saying that the school department is spending less than in fiscal 2017, I'm, I'm not sure how you're making that conclusion. Their, their budget for 2017 was $24,287,000. The percent increase in their expenditures is what I was referring to. 2.4% versus, I think, 3 point, 3.2 from 16-17. Thank you for clarifying that. Mr. Chairman, if, if, if this would be helpful at all to the council's discussion, uh, while we were discussing that, I initiated the changes from the earlier part of the $48,000 reduction on the municipal side. Uh, and when you had that deduction taking place from the 600 account, that takes the total uh, impact on the tax rate from the 3.88, or let's say rounded up to 3.9% to 3.71%. So the town side of that, uh, you know, it's all, it's all comes down to being one final number, but the town side, instead of being, it was at 1.1%, uh, down to seven tenths of one percent increase. Uh, the revenue part stayed the same, but ultimately the bottom line impact was the town's uh, impact on the tax rate is going up nine tenths of one percent. Uh, but overall, you're looking at a net change of three point seven one uh, percent. So this, uh, as opposed to earlier, uh, before that change was made at three point nine or three point eight percent. So we picked up the reactions earlier tonight. We picked up a, a deduction there. The other point I'd actually like to point out, um, um, number seven, we were, we were talking about the um, clause seven and the language around um, if there's a short, further shortfall. Um, what we haven't focused on as much on that item is the language in there um, that is different from what the school board has proposed around the uh, in the event of uh, excess funds being received from the state, um, and what to do with those those dollars should, should they be uh, realized. Um, so the school board, I think, had proposed um, uh, returning 50% of any excess funds to the unassigned fund balance and the 50% remaining to um, uh, reduce um, tax burden. Um, I think with uh, the measure here, um, to be 100%, uh, that's, I think, a good faith um, sort of expression um, to recognize uh, the needs as requested, but also understand that um, you know any anything over and above that will go immediately to addressing the you know the problem that we've all identified of, of um, the taxpayers having to shoulder the burden um, you know for any increase like this. So. Um, in any case, I, I, we hadn't really discussed that tonight, and I thought I'd bring that up as well. So. Other discussion? I believe that has been the standard in practice anyway. Yeah, I just wanted to mention that it was different from what had been proposed by the school board. So, Councilor Wright. I'll put this down as the chances of the state sending us additional monies. Probably fairly slim. Um, it's happened in the past, but very seldom. 
Um, and if they do, those are just small dollars. Those are baby dollars compared to what we're talking about, not millions. So I just want to leave that out. Just as, as a helpful point as well, Mr. Chairman, it would be helpful. Uh, speaking with Superintendent Coulter and the business manager, Captain Mesmer, today, um, Unfortunately, the vote will have taken place in town by the time we know anything. Uh, and hopefully it'll be, we'll, we will know what that number is before the start of the fiscal year, but there's a good chance it may be the start of July before we end up knowing exactly what that amount is to be. Everyone's optimistic that it would be a greater number than what was originally anticipated. But until the legislature finally swings the hammer and closes the session, we know this is the no number at this point in time, so. I have a question for you. So, we need to come to some agreement tonight because this needs to go, we have 30 days it has to be beforehand. So we can't table this for a week. No. And try to get the seventh recruited back in. I'm sure you know how much. Okay, so how do you have to now? <laughs> yeah, we, we do have absentee ballot requests that have been received already. <laughs> Other discussions? Um, Kathy, I appreciate your point on the likelihood of additional funds. That, you know, um, thank you for pointing that out. Um, Other discussion? Okay. Uh, seeing none, all those in favor of the motion on the floor that we allocate, uh, lost track of it here, hold on. What was the total? $24,879, that eight, $24,879,014 as presented in the agenda today uh, with the uh, Alteration to Clause 7 of May curtail spending to offset any choice fall. All those in favor? Opposed? So we'll keep at it. Count Sullivan. Yeah, yeah, I make a motion. Please. I move that we uh, approve a school budget in the amount. And this is the budget originally proposed by Superintendent of $24,682,945. Uh, and that we amend number seven, which I don't know. We amend number seven uh, to return it to the original uh, language of 50% goes for taxpayer relief and 50% to the, to the school budget. Is there a second? A second. Council Wright. A second? Yep. The, the reason I return to that uh, is that, um, again, when I attended that meeting, I thought that that was a re reasonable budget. Um, I thought perhaps I, I could support it. And um, when we had a joint workshop and we were even considering a 1% change to the school budget, uh, Other discussion? Councilor Jordan? I understand that the uh, superintendent said they can make it work because he pointed out that for all adults in the class that he's told and that he has to do, obviously, it wouldn't be, you know, if you want to get work, it's going to have to be the best all the way to go. And as Councilor Ray just pointed out, if we get any extra money, those are baby dollars. It's not going to make up for the 200000 plus that the proposal to cut out of the budget right now. Where they're going to get baby dollars, and as with this proposal, we'll get 
And if they say that the budget's too high, then we can come back and we can go back and forth on picking numbers. Or maybe they'll say the budget's too low and we can give them more money. But we're, we're, we're acting before we even hear from the people. That's why we have these, you know, these votes to approve the school budget so that the people can vote and we can get direction from them. <coughs>
everything they're asking for, they are not going to be heard. The students are still going to be getting a good education. Um, I do not believe that this is going to hurt them the way some other folks think it is. And I would also suggest that, um, well, I'll say that the first year I was on the school board, the school board's, the superintendent's proposed budget was an 11% increase. I voted against it. I was severely um, um, chastised for not being a supporter of the schools. It was too high. And there were other people in town that knew it was too high. There were other times when I was on the school board and I voted against the superintendent's budget. Um, I would say that I'm moderately conservative. Some might think I'm very conservative, but I'm actually not. But I know that um, sometimes when you're talking about the school budget, um, folks that have a direct interest in their children um, because they have children in the schools, I think some, sometimes have somewhat of conflicted interest. And I'll just put that out there. Um, I have a child in the school. Um, fortunately and unfortunately, I, I do when I say what I think. Um, and um, right or wrong, um, I am pretty, um, I'm pretty direct. And I think everybody knows that. So. I'll just put that out there. Other discussion? And I will be supporting um, Jessica's most recent, again, higher than I want, um, but I will be supporting her motion. Councilor? Yeah, I would like to uh, uh, say again that it is a system of checks and balances. It's the way it's set up by law, by state law. Um, I recall in 2008, I believe it was, um, at the height of the Great Recession, and I think that was the first year that the, the school budget went to the voters, if I may be wrong, I think it was the first or the second year after that change took place uh, with the legislature. The, so anyway, at the height of the Great Recession, the school, the school budget proposed was 13%, and it went back and forth in the town several times, and ended up at five. Was 5.3%, I believe. So there was a very glaring example of the importance of checks and balances. I'd also like to, to say that, yes, you know, uh, I, I understand uh, Chairman Garland's point about it being a smaller increase than last year, but I think, again, yeah, it's very important to look at the history. And every single tax rate increase is an exponential increase, excuse me, an exponential increase. So the number is bigger and bigger and bigger. It's just not a one-time thing. It's three percent of a bigger number of a bigger number every year. Um, so I'm hoping that the council will support the superintendent's original budget with the 50-50 amendment. Other discussion? Um, to the point you just made, John Sullivan, I think that. Uh, the example that you gave of whether it was, I'm guessing it was fiscal 20, 2009 based on the history that we're seeing here, because it was a total municipal, total tax rate increase of 5.95 that year, so I'm guessing it's probably fiscal 9. Um, I honestly just think that that underscores my point from before, where um, if, if I saw the school board coming in with what I felt was a, an unreasonable number, an outlandish number, a number that was um, based on um, budget requests for um, programs and services that were so far above and beyond, you know, what was needed. I would completely agree with you. Were I on the council back in 2009, I, I'm sure I would have agreed with that. Um, I just don't see that as being the case this year. Um, having also attended that March 7th uh, workshop where the school superintendent listened to um, the uh, rationales that were delivered from department heads, building um, principles and things like that. Um, I don't. I, I don't think the way the process works. I don't. I don't think. 
um, and I see Dr. Colton. I, I don't think that um, the intent uh, was that the March 7th draft budget were, you know, was to be final. And I also have faith that um, uh, those additional items of which it, I guess, rounds up to about $196,000, if I'm doing the math correctly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, um, were deemed to be priorities. Um, I, I, don't, I don't think that um, that exercise would have been undertaken on March 7th uh, simply as a means of pacifying um, folks that were um, you know, just pushing to add more um, uh, more fat to the budget. Um, you know, what I heard a lot of in that March 7th workshop when I was there was discussion around um, things like gifted and talented programs, where even with this budget, we're, we're still not fully funding a gifted and talented program in the way that many of our other peer communities are. Um, adding ed techs to certain buildings that even, even at that we're, you know, just barely coming up to par with other communities. What I keep looking back at is the point I made earlier, whether it be the per pupil spending, whether it be the, the amount of increases that are happening in other towns, um, I don't see any of these things being out of line with what's happening um, sort of across the, the region. And, um, you know, um, I do have, I, I don't, no, I won't, I won't, never mind. Um, so in any case, I, I guess the, the final point I'd make is that um, I understand the uh, fact that number one, um, as counselors we represent the entire community. Um, we've certainly heard from people at the public hearing last week, we've heard from many other people, uh, you know, in the course of emails submitted to the council of which I take, I don't know if others do as well, but I take uh, all forms of comment through whichever channel they're delivered to be of equal importance, um, whether somebody stands here in the chamber at a public hearing or they send us an email. Um, so I think we've heard from, you know, a lot of different people on this issue. I understand very clearly the, the issue of some people in this community having more means than others. Um, I'm someone who, uh, in the last year and a half, has spent uh, portions of, of that period unemployed twice. Um, I've, I've collected unemployment in that time. Um, I don't take for granted um, the, the good fortunes that we have in this community, because I've certainly, in the very recent past, experienced the not so good times. Um, and for me, you know, increases of any kind have real meaning. I don't take them lightly. Um, they impact me. Uh, certainly have in the past year and a half, I'll tell you that, a lot more than they have. It doesn't change how I value um, and how I think many in the community and many of the people that um, you know, have asked us to represent their views here. It doesn't change how I think um, uh, people place value on, 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 on what is provided in this community. Though. So, um, anyway, I'll leave that at that. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion on the floor for a budget allocation in the amount of $24,682,945 with the amendment to Clause 7 to reflect the 50-50 split of any excess dollars received from the state, 50% uh, going to uh, the school's unassigned fund balance and 50% to the reduction of property taxes uh, with the modification of the clause that the school department may curtail spending to offset any shortfall. All those in favor of the motion. All those opposed. Councilor Jordan. Next 
month. And so if people are interested in the budget being reduced, then they should get out there and get everybody to vote that the budget is too high. And those that feel that the budget is just right need to get out there and vote to approve the budget. And so I propose, I would make a motion to approve item 76, 2017, with a budget of $24,879,013, leaving number seven at 100% going back to allocate, um, to alleviate the tax burden and changing the word shall tonight. Is there a second? Chairman Would you ask? I just reduced the budget from one dollar. So I'm approving the budget by twenty four million eight hundred and seventy nine thousand thirteen dollars. Because I can't make a motion for the same motion that was made earlier. So I, I didn't add a dollar. I reduced it a dollar. <laughs> and encouraging us to take faith in the people of this town that they will come out and vote and direct us as to what they want. Because obviously we're at a three three deadlock here. So we need to hear from the voters, and that is the point of having this go to the voters. There's, there's no more better reason to have a school referendum vote, or whatever it's called, I'm sorry if I'm naming it the wrong thing. That's why we have it, exactly for the checks and balances everybody's talking about, that is the point. And so I'm putting forth the budget for minus one dollar, leaving 100% going back to that, alleviating the tax burden, and changing the word shall to me. Is there a second? I'll sign that. Yeah, Council Grant, discussion. Council Wright? Um, I'll just remind um, folks of what I said earlier. Um, the number that the council sends to the voters is likely to be approved, regardless of what, whether the voters agree or disagree. Um, it has historically been approved. Um, so I don't necessarily agree with Councilman Kate and Jordan that um, the voters would come out and tell us if we, if we had no number, maybe the voters would come out and tell us that. But uh, um, whatever the council decides is probably, in my estimation, the, count, the number that will be voted on. Um, and I don't think that for myself, speaking for myself, has nothing to do with valuing education. I do. Um, I have a daughter that's about to graduate from graduate school this weekend. And she graduated from Cape Elizabeth. She got a good education. Um, I will also make a comment, which I didn't really want to make, but I'm going to make it anyway. Um, we do get a lot of feedback from people. And I saw a pattern in the past. Um, I am always interested in what folks have to say. I'm always interested in people's opinion. What I find annoying, and I'll use that word, is when somebody sends out an email and says to people, you need to write to the council, and here's what you need to say. And then the council starts getting repetitive emails with the exact same wording, which is what we received today. This has happened multiple times in the past. Um, and I think that people who send them, their intentions are good. Their intentions are good. You know, I want to support the budget. Oh my gosh, I've heard the council might vote down the number. I want to support the budget. And they copy and paste. Come on, you know? If you have your own opinion, let's hear it, but let's not do the copy and paste. So, yeah, uh, I'm a little um, uh, not so nice about that, but I, I guess I'm just saying, is if you have something to say, say it. Don't do the copy and paste. And it wasn't just today. Um, I've seen it over the last 14 years several times. In fact, one time it was really interesting. We got, oh, lots and lots and lots of them, word for word. I want to hear what you have to say. I'm interested, but don't do copy and paste. So I'm interested in comments when I see a copy and paste. Um, I really don't pay a lot of attention because I know it's coming from somebody else. So um, I don't know. I know we're in a deadlock. Um, obviously, 
somebody has to jump off the wagon here. Um, I feel that I compromise where I want to be in hopes that if I went up a little, some counselors might go down a little, and maybe we could get at least four votes for something. Um, but I will, I will not vote for the school board's budget. Um, so, thank you. Other discussion? Councilor Jordan? I understand what Councilor Ray is saying. You went up a little, thinking that we would come down a little, but again, we're just randomly picking a number that we might not need to. And I understand that you're saying that the vote, the number that goes to the vote is generally approved, but maybe that's because it's generally supported. I mean, it wasn't approved that one year. Obviously, people had an opinion that year. We have created more awareness around this budget just tonight, unfortunately, it's not being aired. So we're going to have to talk it up and people are going to have to spread the word. But the whole point is to send this to the vote. And if people don't like the number, then we can come back and do what you're suggesting, picking the number. Other discussion? I'll say, we, we're going to sit here all evening, and um, this is a, like I said already, this is a very challenging evening for me because um, I, I really, I really believe that um, we need to do something to start to uh, contain costs in every town. Um, I do support what Caitlin says, and that um, if we send this to the voters, but people need to get out and vote. Because uh, there, are, I know there are, are people who stay away from the polls because they don't think their vote is going to count. But if you don't get out there and vote, of course it's not going to be counted because it won't be there. Um, but I will say that um, um, when Sarah told me that she she wasn't going to that she was going to be taking a hiatus from the council, I said you put me in the position of a swing vote, and that isn't where I wanted to sit. Um, but that's where I'm sitting because I am probably of the ilk that I would say um, send this to the voters. I'm a, I'm a business owner. I believe in um, uh, containing costs, reallocating resources, all of those things that I would, uh, I would ask be done. Um, but at this point, we're going to sit here all evening, and we're just going to go back and forth. Um, and so I'm going to be the swing vote. Other discussion? Council. Would you repeat the motion? Right now it's uh, extra money. Uh, it's uh, no city to move the school budget from twenty four million eight seven nine zero uh twenty four million eight seven nine zero one three uh would be a number and the ten and still keeping the one hundred percent language where if they receive greater than they anticipated that hundred percent of that amount would be used to reduce taxes. And then finally uh switching to shall in May and the last uh, the last sentence of that part. Uh, one question I had Council Jordan was uh, under number one on the F seventy six uh, where would you like to take that dollar all of all other expenditures. All other expenditures okay so that would adjust that to sixty two thousand one hundred and eight dollars. Any other discussion? Um, Councilor Jordan, thank you for your words. Um, if there's no other discussion, uh, call a question. All those in favor of the motion on the table. Allocate uh, funds in the amount of $24,879,013 uh, 
with 100% well, it's as worded, and uh, change to the Clause 7 to reflect the language of May. All those in favor? Opposed? The measure passes. Thank you very much. Next item on the agenda... Item number 77-2017, approval of the Cumberland County Assessment. Is there a motion? Is there a second? Second. Councilor Jordan, any discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous. Item number 78-2017, approval of the local homestead exemption funds. Is there a motion? Councilor Jordan, is there a second? So, Grant, any discussion? All those in favor? It's unanimous. Item number 79-2017, property tax levy limit. Is there a motion? Can you read the whole motion, please? Second. Councilor Jordan, any discussion? All those in favor? All right. Number 80-2017, a proposed fiscal year 2018 general fund budget summary motion. Motion to approve, Councilor Jordan. Um, no. Okay. Mr. Chairman, the only point I would say is I would make the adjustments accordingly to have on this grid to reflect the changes that the council made. Okay. Is there a second? I'll second that. Okay, I'll move it. Thank you. Uh, any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed? Councilor Sullivan, opposed? And that concludes our budget motions. Um, last item on the agenda for tonight is number 91, 91-2017, recommendation from the Appointments Committee for, to fill the Fort Williams Park vacancy. Um, is there somebody representing the Appointments Committee tonight, seeing as the chair of the appoint Appointments Committee is mm -hmm. not here? Councilor Sullivan? Yes, uh, uh, Councilor Penny Jordan and I met last week. And uh, interviewed three elected citizens for the vacancy in the Fort Williams Park Committee. We are the board clerk and the attorney. I want to thank all three uh, applicants who uh, took the, their time to come and meet with us and express their interest in serving the town. And as always, we are so fortunate to have clerk citizens. And it was not easy. Thank you. Is there a second? Second that. Councilor Jordan, any discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous. Is there anybody remaining that wishes to speak? That concludes our regular agenda. Is there anybody remaining that wishes to speak to anything non compliant agenda? None. Is there a motion to adjourn? Councilor Jordan, second? Second. Councilor Jordan, all in favor? Thank you very much. Good night. Awesome. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> I've got a note here. See that. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay. Yeah. I'm sure Wendy will be writing an article. Yeah. But, um, so. Okay. Oh, yeah. It's not like that. Oops. <laughs>